Okay, good afternoon and welcome everybody to today's Northern Latitudes webinar series. Uh, my name is Ben Matheson in Anchorage. We have folks online as well as in Fairbanks. A um, couple of quick housekeeping items before we're rolling. We are on one shared line, so please keep your phones on mute. We are also recording this and we'll be posting to the Northern Latitudes YouTube page. So if you would like to share this with friends or colleagues, uh, there will be basically a YouTube video of this posted within a couple days. Um, a quick introduction to this webinar series. Uh, we are the five landscape conservation cooperatives as well as Alaska Climate Science Center. We are big public-private groups that are working on landscape scale issues, interdisciplinary issues that affect uh, all of us and go across boundaries. Um, today, we are going to talk about the Northwest Boreal Science and Management Research Tool. But I will note that coming up on November 14th, there will be a, another webinar by Meredith Pochart about uh, Yulacan populations related to climate. And then on November 28th, um, again, a Tuesday at 12 o'clock noon Alaska time, the Beacons Project, which has done a huge the spatial analysis for the Northwest Boreal Region to determine uh, benchmark networks and how to design protected areas and uh, a really innovative uh, sort of GIS spatial and uh, ecological analysis. Um, today, however, we will be talking about this research tool, so I'm going to switch for a second. Perfect. Well, again, my name is Ben Matheson. I work for the Northwest Boreal Landscape Conservation Cooperative, LCC. Uh, quick introduction to us for those who are not familiar. We are a big group that spans Alaska and Canada. We have partners from more than 30 different agencies, federal, state, provincial, territorial, tribal, academic. Uh, we cast a, a pretty big interdisciplinary net. And the project that we are going to discuss today is one that the steering committee decided to pursue um, a number of years ago when they were first determining the information needs that are necessary to bring the partnership um, to the next step. And this, partnership, this project to develop this tool involved the work from the LCC, from the Alaska Climate Science Center, from ARLIS, as well as Databasin. Uh, Databasin is a online mapping, conservation mapping, and uh, planning tool. Yes, um, we also had additional funding support from the Alaska Science Center, from the USGS student interns in support of Native American relations, and lots of support from the steering committee, as well as folks um, inside the service, including Steve Johnson, Scott McGee, uh, former LCC staff, including John DeLapp and Amanda Susser, as well as many, many other folks um, along the way. So thanks to uh, that group initially, and it's turned into um, a tool that we're really happy to have developed after these years, and um, really happy to share with you today. I'm going to toss it over to uh, Ryan Tuey from the Alaska Climate Science Center um, to sort of take the, the next step here. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Ben. And uh, thanks to everybody for calling in. It's, it's exciting to see this many uh, people online, and we're excited to kind of show you the launch of this tool. And as Ben mentioned, um, this is kind of the culmination of about about three years of <laughs> um, kind of part-time work by a lot, a lot of people. Uh, ben has been able to kind of carry it over the finish line, and uh, Susan uh, with Arliss has definitely been a, a huge workhorse for the project, so we're really appreciative of those. Uh, but it, it's kind of this is a, a really nice success story of the LCCs in general, and um, what happens when you can get a lot of people in the same room talking together about about different things they need. And um, <clears throat> the the Northwest Boreal Steering Committee, excuse me, pardon me, <clears throat> um, had been uh, kind of had this vision of having a, a database that you could search geographically for uh, ran, land use management plans and uh, journal articles and, and government reports. And so it really became um, 
you know, a, a big part of this was uh, a little bit of data rescue and, and report rescue and uh, recovery. And then also, you know, putting all those things in one place, there, there's not too many places out there where you can get land use management plans, uh, government reports, and then also peer reviewed journal articles. And one of the things that um, really interests me in this project is I, I do a lot of work with Alaska Native communities, and I, I frequently get the question, you know, what, what science has been done in our, our area? And, and until now, for the Northwest Boreal, you, 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 you could answer that, but it, it would take some time to work through the more traditional databases. And now, though, um, with Northwest Boreal Science and Management Research Tool, now you can go to a, a spot on a map, and you don't even have to put in a, a, a search word if you want, but you can just draw a little bounding box around the community and, and look at that, and we'll kind of get into how that works. Um, but again, this was, you know, the an idea of, of uh, one of the many steering committee meetings. Um, that was a great uh, uh, collaboration with ARLIS and, and the Fish and Wildlife Service and the Alaska Climate Science Center. And, uh, and yeah, and, and Susan's going to talk a little bit more about everything that's in there, but now uh, with this tool, you're able to search in all of the Northwest Boreal um, for government reports and uh, peer-reviewed uh, articles and also land use management plans, which uh, Northwest Boreal has a, another kind of project that's working on synthesizing those and, and look at the boundaries. So this has also been kind of a research tool for that project. Um, and one of the biggest things about with the Northwest Boreal is that we're, we're a transboundary LCC, um, and so it's it's been great. We've been able to find a lot of great literature and uh, reports and land use management plans from the Canada side as well. And if you've done any kind of transboundary work, you know that it, it's it's very difficult to uh, you know search both sides of the, the border uh, simultaneously. Um, and so maybe we'll go to the next slide. And so the, our, our main kind of audience and, and stakeholder group for this project was the steering committee because they, again, had kind of thought this would be very useful to a lot of the, the people that they work with and, and themselves. Um, and so that includes land and natural resource managers, um, students for, you know, undergraduate research uh, and graduate research, obviously, um, scientists interested in specific regions of the Northwest Boreal or of Alaska, um, again, we you now have the opportunity to combine a, a semantic, a, a text word, so let's say water, uh, with a certain area. So if you could do water in, in Fort Yukon, and, and you would get up all the results that came up for water within Fort Yukon that were put in there. Um, another primary driver of this was reaching out to Alaska Native community members, um, and, and we hope that this is going to be a, a useful tool for them. This is kind of our, our first uh, presentation on this, and, and we're just officially kind of launching it. So we still have a little bit of work to do, um, but it, it's pretty functional as it is right now. And we definitely have a lot of desires that we hope to work towards in the future. Um, and then finally, we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later, um, but this tool also has some, some really powerful um, possibilities for cross-disciplinary and synthesis researchers. And we'll talk about some of the, the power use kind of applications of this tool and how you can integrate it with a GIS and, and start to search for studies, say, based on rainfall or, or fire history or ecoregion or, or game management unit. And so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. And I believe I'm going to hand it over here to, to Susan to tell you a little bit about what's all in the, the database. Yes, and this is Susan Klein. I'm a librarian at Arliss, and my background is that I have a master's in library science, and then I also have a master's in environmental science. So um, when this job was offered to me, it was a perfect match for me. Um, and what I, I started in about three and a half years ago, and my, my, um, what I was supposed to do was look for articles, management plans, anything that was in the Northwest Boreal area, geographic area, that might be of interest to scientists or lay people um, interested in this kind of work. And so what I did was I um, created some, um, I, Arliss is the Alaska Library and Resource Library and Information Service, and they um, are housed at the University of Alaska Anchorage. So I was um, able to use the databases that both Arliss and UAA have to search for everything. So when, when um, 
I think it was Ben or, or Ryan was talking about this is a distillation of what's in those databases. I was used, I searched in eight different databases that were available at those two places to find these articles, and now they're all available in one place. And I've also been updating, we stopped actually doing the major work at the end of 2015, and since then I've just been adding materials to this database. And um, so the entries span the date from 2000 to the present, the, the uh, steering committee basically set a, you know, a begin date, um, so we didn't have to go back too far, except that management plans, I took any management plan I found because people were interested, and there may not be updates to some of those management plans. They may, there may be a 1974 management plan that has never been updated. So we did take older management plans. The other things I found were um, that are probably unique are some student dissertations and um, uh, master's theses, um, and the subject areas included peer-reviewed literature, um, management literature, but I had a lot of help from someone who worked with Beacons on some management plans that are in the Northwest Boreal, but all of those are incorporated in this. She gave me stuff, I gave her stuff, um, and then from the different state and provincial governments. And, and also the um, management unit, the conservation units within each area. So in Yukon, it, the major one is Kluwani. In Alaska, there's all the um, re wildlife refuges and the parks. And then some of, not all, but because I ran out of time, but some of the um, local parks also, if there's a management plan. And that's what this person with beacons, Nicole, did. She found a lot of those. And I've been looking for other ones as I have time to do that. Um, and we have about 6,000 items now, and it, it keeps growing. And if anyone um, looks in, uh, the other thing I ask is if anyone finds something missing, please let us know, because we can add it. And then the other pro part of this is that there was a, um, not, not only did we find all this, but we created um, shape files for everything, for as much as we could. Of the for for the um, literature that we found, we found shape files, and we hired some people to be geocoders, and they created shape files using Google Earth, and then those were uh, attached to each um, reference. And everything is actually in ScienceBase, which is a um, USGS database, and our um, interface is through databases, so that you can have the be, be able to search um, with the subject area plus hone in on an area. And why don't we start with this search demonstration. Okay, well thanks Susan. And uh, this website is live, it's on the internet. Um, we'll show that URL again. But the uh, interface is, is relatively minimal and we hope that that's um, a good place to start. But um, as long as you know a few keywords and a few kind of places to get started, uh, this search bar will search those 6,000 items and um, sort of bring you to the next steps of um, finding those. So I'm going to start just with a links search. And that's going to return uh, 16 items. And that is neat. But if I want to get a little bit more specialized and look at links that are um, maybe outside of Canada or only inside Canada, um, what I can do is use this map to draw a little polygon. And that number, so I had 16 items before, this, this now narrowed all of those 16 entries to those that only include that sort of Yukon spatial extent. And uh, we can kind of browse them here, but each link will take you to a science-based entry. Science-based is this uh, public USGS um, sort of information metadata source. And on each of those entries, you're going to find a summary, a citation, a title, a year. But most importantly, you're going to find a link or something close to a link to those uh, individual research 
items. And so this one takes me to the Canadian Field Naturalist where I can find the abstract and I believe this one has full text. Um, and I'm going to jump in on that full text. Some people, uh, depending on where you work, may or may not have access to that full text because it's, um, you know, it's a journal and they allow access by certain organizations and your organization has to pay to have that access. But if you are um, a member, if you can go to UAA or ARLIS, you can probably get it that way. Or someplace, if you're a remote in Canada or someplace, you may have a place that you can go to do that. Great, and if I want to sort of, say, scratch the search, I want to do something totally different, um, this X button right here uh, will sort of take away that spatial extent and you can go back to searching for whatever you want to. Uh, one other just quick query that's going to work out is looking at some of those, those state resource management reports and Fish and Game Salmon is going to, you know, bring us up, you know, 225 items that um, I believe this one will get me there. Um, so here I, I do get a you know Yukon River drainage wide summary from 2006 and 2007 with a link to that full PDF. And I tested this in advance, so it's, I think this will actually work. Uh, URLs do change, and that's part of the the internet. But um, we do have all of the the metadata here, so you if you do find a broken link, uh, please let us know but also you've got the citation summary and um, enough steps to get you to the next point. I checked before, this one, this one exists. Uh, one quick other search that I will show you. How about thunderstorms? Okay, so we get two results here. I think this is the one that gets me. And so here we find, uh, you know, a, a dissertation that goes back uh, a few years. So this goes back to 1998, um, a student, maybe one of the first to study some of the uh, new thunderstorm dynamics um, in the state. So some items that you may not find with a Google search, that you may not find even with a trip to the library, um, you may be able to find in this. And one more search as long as I'm going here. This isn't just Alaska, this is across Canada. So we, we have, with a quick text search of Northwest Territories, there's 157 items that come up out of this uh, curated database. It's, it's not just uh, a Google search or a broad search, but these are items that professionally trained biologists and librarians have looked at to sort of vet them for inclusion in this database. So all, all 157 of these should be uh, pretty relevant and pretty, pretty useful. Um, this link, just so that you see it uh, bright and clear, um, is this database and link right here, so aknwc.databasin.org slash science base. Uh, we may be able to procure a, a cleaner URL, but that's the one that we've used for uh, development so far and is the one that's, that's working today. There are a few tweaks that, are, that the developers at Databasin are working on, so this will change a little bit, but it works, it exists, and it's rolling. Um, so again, it's, it's out there, it's public, it works, and we invite you to uh, use it in simple form, or as Ryan will explain, um, there are some kind of extensions to this for those who are uh, more of the power user type. All right, thanks, Ben. And um, yeah, and uh, power users, I guess, is a, as good name as as anything. But any, anything that um, what we're essentially talking about here is, is some of the um, well, a couple things. Uh, some of the long-term sustainability of it, and then some of the, as I already mentioned, kind of integration with GIS. Um, there's another uh, website uh, called journalmap.org uh, that is doing, has done a similar thing. I think they've done about maybe 10 or 12,000 documents. Um, I believe all of theirs are, are peer-reviewed articles. Um, 
and so some of this, the idea was definitely kind of using them as a, as a model and, and trying to um, kind of understand where they were going and uh, and, and go uh, on a similar similar path line. But um, one of the nice things about this is that it is housed within uh, ScienceBase, so that's where all these uh, citations and the bibliography is actually in ScienceBase. Um, the uh, all the polygons are also stored in there. Um, we did the large majority of the things that we scanned were polygons. There are some point things um, in there, and it was kind of up to. We had a team of about four geocoders at one time that were working part time and, and were able to geocode all those references. Um, but it's an open API, um, so it, it is harvestable by by many different uh, websites and, and databases. Um, one of the other, and it also provides a WMS service in, in that sense. So you could, if you are an ArcGIS user um, or some other spatial analysis type user, um, you could run this uh, into your system using a WMS uh, service. And um, and we are working on uh, being able to, to get a bulk download of the database. And so, um, and, and hopefully one day we'll even have this kind of on the web page as, as it exists. But the idea is to really make the most of the spatial locations um, of these articles. And so as I previously mentioned, um, say you were interested in, uh, you know, uh, game management uh, unit 26 and you're, you're, you want to see what research has been done on caribou in that area. Um, ultimately, we hope that you could do this in a GIS where if you have that game management unit 6, do the bulk download of the data, and then query all the, the polygons based on that game management unit 6 and, and caribou. Um, another example, you could look for different precipitation bands uh, throughout the state. So if you wanted to look for polygons that intersected with you know, 500 millimeters of uh, per, per precipitation. Um, or uh, another example would be looking at, uh, you want to see what studies or, or reports uh, were uh, intersected with uh, f fire history from 1950. And so we have the polygons, again, as, as GIS users, and you can, will eventually be able to kind of intersect those with the, the, the database. Um, so it, it provides a lot of um, kind of enhanced uh, research power to start to look at uh, some of the different things and, to, again, to be able to search beyond um, beyond just text and, and starting to think about what other kind of parameters and variables may be interesting to search by uh, along with that text. So that's uh, hopefully where we're, we're headed in, in future steps because um, I think there's, again, a lot of great application for that. And again, just to mention, as, as it is part of science-based, um, the USGS, at least, and I, I believe most of the Department of Interior is now being mandated to publish their data sets uh, within ScienceBase. And so um, part of this is, is uh, somewhat sustainable uh, because uh, things will be kind of automatically uploaded and um, we'll eventually get the, the, the server to kind of be able to prioritize uh, things uh, correctly um, in, terms of, in terms of search algorithms. But there, so that, that's nice. So ScienceBase has a kind of a sustainable future ahead of it. It's free. Anybody can get an account. Anybody could upload things uh, to this as long as they talk to the, the kind of project team. Um, so uh, we're, we're hopeful that we have a, a long future ahead of us and a, and a lot of great research comes out of it. And we're going to go into the weeds in our next step here. So I guess I, I wanted to sort of stop and pause and see if there's any uh, questions before we talk a little bit about process and a little bit about lessons and uh, some of those those deeper deeper facets to this project. So if anyone has questions, please. Uh, um, remember to take your mute off. Hey, Ben, this is uh, Joel Reynolds with National Park Service. Will you ultimately say something about um, uh, sort of the maintenance required to keep building this from this? Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that uh, okay. next, yeah. Thanks. All right, well, let's, um, let's go ahead and get into the weeds for a second about how we, how we built this, and afterwards we'll talk about how we might do it a little bit differently next time around. <laughs> Um, this is Susan, and basically I used uh, the databases at UAA and at Arlist, 
and we put them into a bibliographic database, which we then created shape files. That was uploaded to database to a database. No, um, science base. Sorry, and then. Um, where you can, and we've created uh, shape files down at the bottom there. You can see on this uh, slide, and that all went into the USGS um, Science Base catalog. Currently, what we're doing is we're um, searching. I have uh, Google Alerts, and I've been going into those original databases and creating alerts that come to me with the search terms. And then I put those into an EndNote database. I make an XML file. I upload. I add a shape file, and then it automatically is in the database after that. But it's a, a long, uh, little, detailed way of doing it. So I upload probably um, somewhere between 25 and 50. Maybe this month I'm going to have more than that um, every month to the database. Um, and it, it's a, you know, it's a, just a sort of thing that I've been doing. I um, actually work eight hours a week, and it keeps me busy. Um, and so that's currently what we're doing to keep it um, current. And we don't have a really specific, well-funded, perpetual plan for this. But what we designed this to do is to be on a stable platform that does allow us to sort of future-proof the work that we're doing right now. So we've documented, Susan and Steve and others have documented how they developed this bibliography, how they built the sort of reference pieces to begin with, and uh, that's something that can be carried on by other folks in other scenarios. And then one piece that we are particularly happy about, I think, is that we used ScienceBase, which um, again, it has this, has this open API, so basically other developers can, with the right query, access all of this information and build it into new searches, different searches, however the web changes in the years to come. Uh, we've got a modern web infrastructure so that uh, others can build off of this and make some even, even neater things that we haven't quite thought of uh, at this point. The, the big lift that we did over the last couple of years, building the bibliography and then building shapefiles, and I was one of those people who helped draw a lot of little shapefiles um, a couple of years ago. Uh, that initial lift has been done, but uh, our maintenance is uh, much, much slimmer and much smaller um, at this point. And I was going to add, although we have this nice um, access through databases, you can also go into ScienceBase and go look for the Northwest Boreal LCC, and that's where all the data is actually housed. So if you want to do it that way, you can, but you can't do the um, geo geospatial searching there. You have to go through databases to do that. Well, we're still, we're still kind of polishing off the pieces on this, but we've I guess we've got a few lessons in how to how to do this for for next time. Uh, I'll, I'll toss it off to Ryan. Ryan, what's, we haven't planned this part, but what's, what is our, <laughs> our primary lesson learned? Yeah, this, this is kind of our uh, first presentation in a series. Hopefully, we'll be presenting at uh, uh, Alaska Forum on the Environment uh, too. So, if you have plans to go there and see a maybe an even more whiz bang presentation, but um, <clears throat> you know, one of the one of the main lessons uh, learned is and this I think this came about as we were doing it um, as as you can see from the previous slide you know we we used Google Earth to draw all our shape files and that was that was pretty time consuming um, and then we had to you know separately import the the references and then the shape files and then link them up and get them all in one one spot and that it, that seems really should be simple but uh, it's it's more complicated than it sounds um, but what has come about while we've been working on this is that ScienceBase has uh, a, a great um, kind of a metadata editor um, where you can go in and actually footprint. And so uh, now, if we are, are starting to, to to use this, um, we you know load up a, a new reference uh, that we found. Um, the in ScienceBase, there's a, a place where you can actually draw a polygon or, or put a point, um, and then that just gets kicked right into the library. So 
Joel asked about kind of the long-term maintenance of this, um, there's a, there's a lot of things that are very beneficial with using science space that really uh, hopefully will kind of contribute to the sustainability of this project. Um, again, the, the data should be there. What we've done so far, um, you know, should be there for the foreseeable future. Um, there will be things that will be updated uh, through science base in general so that, you know, there's part of that um, that is also, you know, not necessarily done by us, but that we will, uh, that'll kind of immediately populate the, the data as science beca base becomes more frequently used, especially by USGS and other Department of Interior employees. Um, and, and that actually brings up another set. We don't have actual databases uh, in there with actual data yet. Um, we have all the, the kind of the reports, the literature, um, and the, the land use management plans. Um, but again, as, as science base kind of grows and becomes more smooth and evolves, those, those databases uh, will actually eventually be in there. Um, and, you know, and, and as, as Ben was saying, with that open API, it gives us a lot of opportunities um, to perhaps uh, our partnership with database has been pretty good, but if we find somebody else that wants to do a little bit more uh, custom work, um, you know, we're, we're very kind of interested in, in developing some of these other uh, capabilities too. And again, we are, uh, you know, still taking suggestions, and we've got some limited time from Susan to add new contributions if there is a particular use for those. So uh, Susan's email is, is on here, and we'll have everyone's email at the end so that you can uh, feel free to give us a, a shout at any point. And with that, uh, that's kind of the, the bulk of what we wanted to show off today and uh, really hope you enjoy perusing the website and, and sort of seeing what you find and telling us what you don't find and uh, going from there. So glad to take any questions. And uh, Susan. I, I, um, I have a couple of things <clears throat> that I forgot to mention when I was giving my little description. Um, we had a list of areas of concern that were articulated by the steering committee, and that was where I, how I figured out what to look for. They also had a list of species of concern, so I looked for those. Um, and there were four mammal species, nine bird species, and three fish species. Um, I was not able to find some of the bird species in the literature in this area, um, but all the other uh, species that I looked for, were, well, I found information and they're in here. Um, and then we also have quite a bit of information on invasive species management, if that's an area of interest. And we're glad to take uh, any, any questions. And uh, remember to put your mute button off if you're going to ask a question. Not a question, but this. thanks so much for presenting this. This is Beth. Um, this, I'm, I can't wait to go look for it. Thanks. Hey, hey Ben, this is Brett in Fairbanks. Is that URL on the North Coast Florida website yet? Uh, I'll have to double check on the post for this webinar, but uh, we're kind of launching it as we, as we speak, so I will ensure that that link is prominent um, for the next post once I get, once I get this up. Yeah, we're gonna go awesome. Thanks, Ben. Could you show it again once more? This is uh, Liana Hefner, the incoming partnership director for Northwest Florida LCC. <laughs> um, and uh, this is fabulous. Uh, I'm glad that we got to showcase us today. And I'm wondering, um, you mentioned that you're going to be AFE, just great. And I'm wondering what other, if you guys have a, an additional rollout plan for how you want to continue to advertise this and get this into the hands of your list of users. We have a list of 
email lists that will be uh, that are some are being sent out right now, some are going forward in the future. Uh, would gladly invite any any suggestions for places to uh, show this off. If you've got any particular good university connection or otherwise that you think may be interested in this, please um, anybody join us today. Please uh, share that. But it's um, it's kind of launching as we as we speak. So um, we. We think it's going to be most interested, most interesting to people who are doing research, engaged in research, developing plans, and uh, that's our, our target audience. And, and through our list, we reach out to UAA faculty, and also one of the librarians at our list is with Fish and Game, so she has a, a, a way to reach out to those people. Awesome. Sounds like yeah, and, and we. This is Ryan. Um, We'll, we'll be planning to kind of uh, present at a lot of the, the local uh, conferences and Anchorages and Fairbanks and, and potentially even Whitehorse um, if we can. But definitely we'll, we'll try to get a couple more webinars out there because I think um, that's definitely definitely one of the, the challenges is just letting people know that it's out there. And, um, and so I think those are all good avenues. Because, again, I, I, I personally I feel that uh, communities may be Black and Native communities and First Nations may be very interested in this this tool um, because, again, they can go put a little, little box around their community and say, hey, what's been done here, and, and start poking around. So um, I, for me, I think in terms of developing climate adaptation plans and um, just general uh, governance and, and, and science documents for the, the, the TC or the, or the First Nation, um, I think that has a, a lot of powerful opportunity there. Yeah, this, and this is Liana again. I, I have some ideas that I'm happy to chat with you guys about uh, for getting this out. And I'll also talk to our folks at, um, who put together the newly launched adaptalaska.org website. Also putting a plug in there for that, but that's uh, focused on climate adaptation, resources and tools and information for, uh, for folks working in Alaska um, and, and potentially beyond. So. Um, this is something maybe we could get get this up here as a resource. Great. Well, I assume you were all very busy searching the uh, Northwest Boreal Science and Management Research Tool, or SMART, as the acronym goes. <laughs> If there's no further questions, um, I would remind you that we will have this recorded. It will be on the Northern Latitudes YouTube site and the Northwest Boreal LC YouTube site as well. Feel free to share this link and share it, share it widely. So thanks, everyone, so much for joining. Uh, thank you for all of the, the many, many people who helped bring this project together a number of, of years ago and is finally uh, live and, and out to the world. So. Um, thanks, everyone, and we'll we'll see you many of you soon.